is our God. Jehovah is our God. Mwambie Jehovah wewe ni Mungu. Kalim Jehovah you are God. Kalim Jehovah you are King. On the top of your voice tell him Jehovah you are God. You are mighty. You are awesome. you. Uh, thank you, worship team and the rest of our teams on duty. May the Lord bless you. We may be seated. We may be seated. I began talking about developing a grateful or a thankful heart. Developing a grateful or a thankful heart. Laying a foundation for this season is a season that is being celebrated across the world between the month of October and November and December. And in this season also, the Lord laid it upon our hearts as a church to begin to pray for 2023. So the last two weeks, we have been praying for 2023. And uh, the extra mile prayer is part of it. And soon, we will be unveiling our theme for the year 2023. But while in this season, we are giving thanks to God. Praise the name of Jesus. We are giving thanks to God. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. It's one of our main texts. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Can you give us New King James Version? 
and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Next, 19. Let's read together. Speaking to one another in psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know singing is one of the ways we give thanks to God. Go back to verse 19, please. Singing is one of the ways. Speaking to one another. Speaking to one another in psalms. Sharing psalms. And Psalms are uh, um, written passages of songs. The entire Psalms is more songs and you will see to the director of the music, David, to the director of, so it, it's all a compilation of uh, uh, songs that were sung with David and others. So he says, speaking to one another in Psalms. In other words, our lives are saturated with the hymns, with Psalms, which are songs and the spiritual songs. Amen. We have Psalms. We have hymns and we have spiritual songs. Thanksgiving is expressed in psalms. Thanksgiving is expressed in songs. Thanksgiving is expressed in hymns. And we make melody in our hearts to the Lord. Amen. Some thanksgiving is also expressed in our speaking. We speak. We speak, acknowledge, appreciate, commend, and all this is part of thanksgiving. So Paul tells the people of Ephesus, that don't be drunk with wine. There is what wine does when people drink. There is what wine does. In which there is debauchery or dissipation. But he tells them instead of being drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. It is out of the Spirit of God that is filled in us. Psalms will begin to be activated. Now, you know, David wrote the songs in the book of Psalms. You can also write your own. Praise the name of Jesus. You can write your own psalms. You can, nobody said, stopped us from writing. Write your psalms. Read the psalms you write. As you incorporate the psalms that are already written. Amen. I know you say, the Bible says, whoever adds or subtract, you're not subtracting. You're just writing your own story of psalms which gives them thanks to God 
and gives praise to God. Psalms 100, verses 4 through 5. Enter his gates. Let's read together. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Verse 5. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. We have every reason to give thanks to God. You have every reason to give thanks to God. Uh, give us back the scripture please. You have every reason to give thanks to God. Why? The Lord is good. Help me to tell somebody the Lord is good. Tell another one the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And because the Lord is good, he thinks of good. He plans of good. His thoughts are good concerning your life. And his love endures forever. You and me know we love people and when things go wrong, we hate them. We can love people. We can tell them how we love them. Have you ever wondered why a man will chop off the fingers of his wife that he has told over the years, I love you. Have you ever wondered why a woman would pour hot water on the husband that he has always told, you are my only thing on this planet? What happened to the love? What happened to the love? The love of the Lord endures forever. He changes not. Man would change. Praise the name of Jesus. How many people you told you you love and now you, you don't feel like loving them anymore? How many people did we tell we love? Maybe the best would have been I like. How many people we, we tell, we have told I love, I love, and what happened? Along the way, things changed. Things changed. Praise the name of Jesus. I was listening to somebody who said, the fact you love something, it may not have God's approval. The fact that you love something, it's not necessarily what you love, has God's approval. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to be sure we are, we are together. Praise the name of Jesus. The love of God endures forever. In other words, it has a beginning and it has got no end. But let me put it this way. The love of God has got no beginning and has got no end. Amen. So, and his mercy, go, go back to um, verse 4, please. I'm still on verse 4. Um, go back to verse 5. I don't know whether you changed the version. For the Lord is good, his much endureth forever. Yes. For the Lord is good and his love endures. Endures. You know, the meaning of enduring, amen, endures, suffers long. Praise the name of Jesus. The love of God suffers long. And, and when I think about God and how we treat him, you know how we treat God? We, you know how we treat God with contempt? You know how we treat God without regard? And God endures. 
his love endures for in other words the love of god has the ability to withstand the pressure we put on that love the pressure we put on that love we test god but his love endures amen The love of men may not endure. Because it's not the agape love. It may not endure. But the agape love endures, suffers long. Has the capacity to receive pressure from your life. And just remains there. I love you. I died for you. I love you. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And his faithfulness continues throughout all generations. That's why I love God. Because his faithfulness continues throughout all the generations. Men are faithful today. But they may not necessarily be faithful tomorrow. I've seen people who have been very faithful. But after a short time. They are no longer faithful. They are no longer faithful. God's faithfulness. Which it's imputed, a fraction of it is imputed to us, should keep you and me faithful in all things. Praise the name of Jesus. God's love, which is imputed on you, should keep you enduring as well, just as God. Endures. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I've seen people passionate about God. They are passionate about God. But with time, you find the passion is not there. The passion is not there. I could be speaking to somebody here. You are passionate about God. You are outgoing. You are on fire for God. But today when you reflect in your life, the passion is not there. The zeal is not there. You don't even want to hear. You don't want to hear. I pray that when you remember where the Lord picked you from, and when you remember what the Lord has done in your life, you will be grateful and you will remain faithful to God. General Abuanari Tukus. So, we said last Sunday, Thanksgiving, which is our gratitude, is an act. Is an act. It's something that is done. And the definition was picked from dictionary.com. The act of giving thanks, grateful acknowledgement of benefits or of favors, especially to God. Especially to God. Now, this, this is just a definition defined by men. And that's why they are saying, especially to God. Which means is distinctive. But we also need to render the same in terms of gratefulness, acknowledgement to men. Praise the name of Jesus. 
We also need to render the same to men. Acknowledge men. Honor men. Be grateful to God. Be grateful to men for what they have done in our lives. Now somebody will say, oh, that will look like you want to worship men. Listen to me. Show me where God is standing here. Can you point at God in, in any place in this house? That, oh, the, here he is. You only see God through people. Praise the name of Jesus. We see God through men. If God wanted, and, and that's why, for God to fulfill his agenda in the earth, when he created everything, he created man in his image and in his likeness. So, so that through men, God will be seen on the earth. Amen. Amen. If you want to see God, it's not in a corner here. God is in men. He manifests himself in men. When we talk about the power of God, it does not operate in isolation. It's manifested in men. Praise the name of Jesus. So when we talk about developing a grateful heart, developing a thankful heart, it has to do with what we are seeing and even what we are not seeing. Praise the name of Jesus. We give thanks to what we are seeing and through what we are seeing and by extension what we are not seeing. That's why faith, there are things that are hoped for. When we pray, we say, Father, we thank you for tomorrow. Have you seen tomorrow? No. But we also say, Father, we thank you for today. Did we see today? Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. So we are able to give thanks to God. And, and God has brought men and continues to bring men in our lives. He brings people around you. So that by the people you see, you develop an attitude. I said, this is a virtue. A virtue that is developed. A virtue that is acquired over a period of time. Those who study character development, they will tell you, character is developed over a period of six months. Anything you do continuously for six months becomes part of your life. Becomes part of your being. Amen. Amen. And that's why it's important to know being grateful and thankful has to be developed. Has to be developed. It, it is learned Amen. It is learned to be grateful and to be thankful. It is supposed to be inbuilt. But somehow, it doesn't happen automatically. I come to the school here and I see children and I, I can tell you what is happening in the lives of those children? One time I saw a baby that was brought here and was crying and jumping everywhere and jumping. And after two weeks, the baby had settled. Had settled. And you wouldn't know it's the same baby that was all over. Why? Because there is an adaptivity adapting and being conditioned to the environment. 
You are adapting. He adapted. He was conditioned. He saw other children are quiet, seated. He saw other children, when they stand up, they say, yes, yes, madam, yes. And, and, uh, he, and after a short time, the baby adapted, learned. Now, that particular baby or child, it is just natural to do. What, once he gets here, it's just natural to do what is because it's something that has been learned. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Parents who have children here, I know children have reminded you, you have not prayed for the food. Have they? Have ever your child, you started eating and the child said, Mommy, we have not prayed. Mommy, we have not. Have, have they? Yes. Why? Because th th that's what now they have adopted. They have acquired. But for you, oh man, you, you need to work on that. Amen. You need to work on prayer of thanksgiving for the food. You need to work on that. You need to work on a thanksgiving um, of your day. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I looked through, just to add on to, into this introduction, I look through um, some historical, some biblical background. And uh, the concept of thanksgiving in the Bible, in the Old Testament alone, it appears 102 times. The concept of thanksgiving. And in the New Testament, it appears about 72 times. So, in the entire Bible, the concept of thanksgiving is about 174 times. Now, when I talk about concept, it means directly and indirectly. Amen? Amen? They are direct out of the 174 places that talk into thanksgiving and being grateful. All in the Bible, there could be a place where it speaks directly, thanksgiving, or there could be a place where the expression of that particular passage means thanksgiving. Then this morning, I try to figure out how many days are there in a year? How many? 300 and? Depending on the year. Praise the name of Jesus. So 174 is almost, 174 is almost close to six months. Amen. So technically, if we were to go by close to a half, close to a half, those days, if technically we were to go close to a half of the year, what does that mean? Then it means a half of the year. If you were to start giving thanks, you will give thanks to the Lord continuously for six months. Amen. You wake up in the morning 24-7. You are just doing what? Giving thanks. And, and that's the magnitude. That, that's how God has placed value on this virtue of being grateful. On this virtue of giving thanks. That for six months, 
you would wake up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And if you will be like the, the, the 24 elders in the presence of God in the book of Revelation, they are bowing before God 24 7 giving him worship. That means you would 24 7 bow before God and give thanks for six months. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we sing songs that we don't mean. Hello? We, we've just been singing here. Isn't it? Did we mean? Maybe the praise and worship meant it. But we who are being led to praise, did you mean? Did you internalize the song? Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe the song was difficult. So you just did like Kichekodawa. You know Kichekodawa? You know it? A few here know Kichekodawa. You can check on YouTube Kichekodawa and then you'll get to know what it is. Where, where, where are people? You, you know, sometimes if we ask you to sing you, you, and you are recorded on Kichekodawa and then you are given what you are singing, you will run away because you will know that is not you. And sometimes we sing here it's like just we, 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 we are eating our tongues, chew, chewing our tongues. But no bad. But what I'm asking, intentional, I'm looking at the intention, you being intentional in your thanksgiving. Because you could sing a song like, Asante Yesu, Asante Yesu, Asante Yesu, Asante Yesu. But do you mean it? Or that, that was just a song? Amen. It, it could be, yes, we, ex, we, we have a lot of expression of thanksgiving but do we mean that goes into when you, you tell somebody when you tell somebody thank you do you mean it? When you tell somebody I am grateful do you mean it? When you acknowledge somebody, when you acknowledge somebody, do you mean it? You know what it's called flattering? You know we can flatter people. To make them feel good. But when I say I appreciate, does it spring from my heart? And that's why God speaks and says, These people, they love me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So when we say, thank you, Jesus, when we say, thank you, Jesus, praise the name of Jesus. When we say, 
Thank you, Jesus. Is it coming from your heart? Praise the name of the Lord. 174 times. God has placed high value on this virtue. That me and you would find it in our hearts. We'll find it in our lives. Hallelujah. To be grateful. To be thankful. To the Lord. Amen. To be thankful to the Lord. So this is a virtue that we are supposed to develop. Is a virtue that you need to develop in your life. It should come out naturally after it has been developed. Looking at what God has done in your life. Looking at what God has been in your life. Looking at what other people have been in your life. I was asking this morning, there are some people who have taken you through, who took you through hell. People who took you through hell. Either some relatives you were staying with. Amen. It could have been a husband, it could have been a wife. They roasted you. But while you are being roasted, something was developed in your life. Resilience. Being hopeful. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the name of Jesus. Can, can you imagine how you were being roasted? Probably by a relative. When you stayed, when you lived, when you... Can, can you imagine? And, and even we who are staying with our relatives and we are roasting them. This may be done very indirectly, but, but, but it is happening. But that particular roasting, it did something in your life. <laughs> Let me come close. You broke down many times. Hallelujah. In the hands of your relative, in the hands of the people that, like our girls who go to Saudi Arabia, some of them break and die there, others survive and come back. And they have stories to do what? To tell. I was... I was listening to the ones that are going to Thailand. I wonder why people believe they must go out of this country. Amen. Hello. I wonder why you believe you have to go out of this country to succeed. We are here and we are succeeding. I don't know whether you're getting this. Praise the name of Jesus. And... <laughs> Minister Veron, can't you succeed in here? We are here. Why, why do you think, ladies, why do you think you have to go to Dubai, you have to go to Saudi Arabia you have, for you to succeed? Amen. There is a lot. I don't know why I've gone that direction. There is a lot we can thank God for here. We can prosper here. We can be established here. You don't need to go and say, People who, everything in the U.S., in Canada, revolves on money. You know you can live here without money. You can live here without money. But you can't live there without money. 
to move. You have to heat your house during winter. You have to, uh, you have to cool your house during everything is running on We, we, have, we have a such a blessed country. Praise the name of Jesus. Young girls, you don't need to go to Thailand and be turned into a sex prostitu a pro prostitution, sexual sex business, and that kind of stuff. You don't need. You don't need to do that. And that story says, if you don't meet the target, they begin to tread on your body parts. They will tell you now, because you are not meeting the target, we need one of your kidding, because they have found somebody, or we need one of your eye, or we need one of, come on. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how can we appreciate what we have today? Can you appreciate what you have today? Can you appreciate where you are today? If you cannot appreciate now, I'm not so sure you will appreciate tomorrow. If you cannot appreciate now, you can't appreciate tomorrow. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Men appreciate your wives. Do I have men here who are with their wives? Please stand up on your feet. Stand up. If you have your wife, both of you stand up. If you are here with your husband, stand up. If you are here with your wife, stand up. Oh, your ass is not here. Amen. They are sitting close. Eh? And I, of course, I know you ass is uh, over there. Amen. All men who are married, stand up. Men who are married. Amen. My, mine is here. <laughs> this is mine. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Are you ashamed of your wife? Oh. Are you ashamed? Am, am, I, am I talking to men here? Are you ashamed of your wife? Are you ashamed of your man? It, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So how do you put value on that queen of your heart? This one is mine. Oh, amen. <laughs> how do you put value on the queen of your heart? Amen. Not of the church. Not the queen of the church. Okay. This is the queen of my heart. Yes. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. You, you know, it's very easy for you to see another's and you think it's better than yours. Amen. And you think when, if you could have gotten that one, maybe things would have been better. Can you sit down? Praise the name of Jesus. And one of the things I've learned is appreciate and put value on your spouse in the public. You know, men, we want to reserve that in the heart. Ah, you know I love you, so I don't have to put this in the open. Please put it in the open. Am I talking to people here? Put it in there. Let people know that you love her and let people know that you love him. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to people here? Yes. This is a, not a marriage enrichment, but I'm talking about being grateful. Being grateful for that person you have in your life. Being thankful for that person you have in your life. Praise the name of Jesus. It is your responsibility to put value on that person. Put value on that person. Amen. When you put value on that person, then the person will become what you want the person to be. Put value.
Put value on that person. Put value on that husband. Put value on that wife. Put value on your children. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And put value on yourself. So when you develop a grateful, a grateful heart with what you already have, then that shows what you don't have, when it comes, you will still be appreciative. I've heard people say, when I get a lot of money is when I will give. Listen to me. If you can't give now with the little you have, when you will have, you will never give. Hallelujah. So, there is much that we can do by being grateful already for what we have. Being grateful for what you have. Learn to be grateful for what you have. If you incalculate that behavior, that character, that culture, when it becomes part and parcel of your life, I want to tell you, a grateful heart the Lord will not despise. Praise the name of Jesus. Learn to be thankful. Learn to be thankful. Learn to be grateful. Let me mention a few things I mentioned last Sunday. I said, when we focus on the negatives around us or in people, we will never see anything to appreciate. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you focus on the negatives, there are so many things going wrong in this world. This morning I mentioned about the mugging spree that is happening in this country. Hope it's, it's in public domain, the mugging spree. That young people and the gangs are just mugging people in the broad daylight. Hallelujah. And you know when you are mugged, people are just there and it's like nothing is happening. They continue their business. They continue their business. Young people on motorbikes, like what was happening in Westlands yesterday morning, on about 10 motorbikes, surrounds a man, pulls him down, and they, oh my God. Amen. Aren't you grateful to God that you went out and came back in one piece? Amen. Aren't you grateful that when you went out, you still came back without a scar, without a mark. You may not have anything to eat today, but there is another day. Can you be grateful for today? Can you be grateful for today? You might be complaining about a dress, shoes, I said. There are people who have no body. They are emaciated completely. Nothing can hang on them. Thank God you still have some piece of meat on you that can hold that dress you are complaining about. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. 
We need to learn to be grateful. We need to learn to be thankful. And that's why I said here the other day, we are a complaining nation. Kenya is a complaining nation. We will complain almost about everything. We can't be grateful. We can't be thankful. We don't see anything to thank God for. Yet there are so many things that we need to thank God for. Even as a country. In this season of thanksgiving, you have to focus. Focus on the little thing you see that is good. Your gratitude, your thanksgiving will overshadow what is not right. Praise the name of Jesus. Your thanksgiving will overshadow what is not right. But when you are full of criticism, criticism, you will never see anything. And I'm talking in terms of relationships. You criticize, I say last Sunday, you criticize the food. You, you, you murmur about the food, but guess, guess what you are eating? You are murmuring all oh, this food and you are eating. And before you know it, the, the plate is finished under criticism. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the, the plate is finished. Praise God. Why would you be complaining? When you see the negatives in people and you see the negatives of what God is not doing, I want to tell you, you will lack gratitude. You will not be thankful. Praise the name of Jesus. You will not be thankful. I'm not saying you should not raise an issue but when you become a perennial complainer, you are perpetually complaining from morning to evening. When will you be grateful? When will you give thanks? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Another point I said last Sunday was when true humility is replaced with pride. Humility. When humility is replaced with pride. Pride is simply saying I have arrived. I don't care. Humility places us into a position where we say you understand what you are not able to do. Humility always comes out of weakness, not strength. When you realize how vulnerable you are, you become humble. You become humble. So when humility is replaced with pride, you will never appreciate. Another point I said, when you become the God in your own life, in your own eyes, you have become a God. Because if we are supposed to be grateful to God, if we are supposed to be thankful to God, and already you have become a God, you won't be grateful. You won't be thankful. I am what I am today because of the grace of God. And because of that, I will forever be grateful to God. Praise the name of Jesus. I would forever be grateful. I'm not different from the people who were turned away when they went to get their visa. I'm not different. 
Were they sinners? No. Did they do anything wrong? No. Because one of, I had one asked, have you ever gone outside Kenya? No. Your visa is denied. Another one came. Oh, what are you going to do in the U.S.? H have you ever gone out of Africa? No. Your visa is denied. Oh, okay. Praise the name of Jesus. There are things we take for granted. There are things you take for granted. Praise the name of Jesus. And I want to challenge you. At least go to Uganda. <laughs> Praise God. At least go to where? Then go to Tanzania. Are we together? Tanzania you can go even on foot. It's not very far. Am I talking to us here? Amen. At least cross some border here. Inaza kukuokolea mahali. Amen. I'm just encouraging you. I'm just encouraging you. You remember the testimony of Reverend Wesonga, those who are here? How we went around the former American embassy in 1993, fasting for two weeks, praying that we would be given a visa that we were never given. crying tears. Do you know that prayer was not in vain? It is what is working now. Am I talking to people here? Praise the name of Jesus. Do you know that prayer was not in vain? Because we were praying to God who is in heaven. But it was not time. When time comes, you just walk and get. You walk and get. You walk and get. Am I talking to people here? Praise the name of Jesus. But when I'm looking Looking back, I'm thankful to God that that happened. It taught me patience. It taught me to wait. And I remember the lady who was interviewing me looked at me and said, okay, can you come? She told me I come when I'm 41. <laughs> told me, can you come when you are 41? Hey, so how, how can I squeeze myself to be 41 so that I come tomorrow? That is, he has just told you, so, and I said, okay, I'll wait until I'm, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to pray, let's stand on our feet. I want us to make a prayer. I've used my own example. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to God. I'm thankful to God. Because God has taken me to places that I would have never imagined that I would go. And I'm thankful. I'm extremely thankful to God. Amen. There are some little things we take for granted. Praise the name of Jesus. Just continue being faithful. Continue being faithful. It will happen. Amen. You are a product of many hands. And I want you to ask yourself, have you ever been really appreciative for the many hands who have touched your life? I say some of the hands who touched you were like a terror in your life. They were like a terror. Some of the people who 
became caregivers. There are people here who grew up under caregivers. You may not have grown directly under your parents. But you can look back and see the kind of mess they did to you. But out of that mess, here you are. Here you are. That's, there, there are people here. When you look back, you say, that situation taught me there is a God in heaven that I can trust. There is a God in heaven I can trust. You have gone through, but I want you to see also there are some people here who you are caregivers, they gave you everything. They gave you everything. You have no complaint over them. But how have you been appreciative? How have you been giving thanks? So I want us to go before the Lord and walk a journey into your past. I want you to walk a journey into your past and see people who have touched your life and they give thanks to God. They may have touched you in the wrong way, but they did something. They did something. Some of you, you learned how to be independent. You learned how to be independent because of what you are going through. You can be grateful to God and you can be thankful to some of those people. I want you to lift up your voice to God in prayer and walk that walk. See those men, see those women, see your parents, your brothers, your sisters, could be your elder brother, could be somebody who has done something in your life to bring you to where you are. Could be your stepmother, could be your stepfather, could be a relative somewhere. Some of them, the things they did in your life, they have left marks, they have left scars. But you can look back and say, you have a life in you. You have a life. At least that situation taught you something. Taught you resilience. Taught you to trust in God. Taught you to be a man you are. Taught you to be a woman you are. Taught you to be somebody who appreciates life. Taught you to be with the humor. Taught you to be with the sympathy that you can sympathize with others when they go through difficult times. I want you to go back in your life. Begin to thank God. Thank God for those situations. Thank God for those people. Thank God for those brothers, sisters. Thank God for those family members. Thank God for their lives. Thank God for their lives. Thank God for their lives. I say lift up your voice to God. 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 I know you are saying, how? How can I? How can I thank God? Thank God because God kept you. God sustained you. God sustained you. God kept you. God sustained you. God kept you. God sustained you. Shada badada. Ikala badada. Yembra dadada. Bo sida badada. Sheda badada. Rekala badada. Yandolo bo shadada. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. 
Sometimes this is a hard prayer to pray. This is a hard prayer to pray. Because you may never see the good that came out of that situation. Because some of us, those memories can only bring tears. But remember, the Lord wipes away all our tears. In those difficult circumstances, he still remains to be God. He still remains to be God. You can be grateful to God. You can be thankful to God. And tell him, Lord, because of your mercies, I was not consumed in that environment. I was not consumed in that situation. You may have been denied many things. You may have been denied many things. But thank God you are still alive today. Thank God you are alive today. God of wonder, Yahweh, glorify your name, Adonai, you reign forever you. Forgive us, Lord, where we have deliberately not discerned the need of gratitude. Lord, heal the wounds of many listening and watching and those that are here. They are bleeding from their scars. They are bleeding from their struggles. But yet, Lord, you demand of us to be grateful. Lord, I pray for the grace of gratefulness. 
I pray for the grace of having a thankful heart that this congregation and those within the voice of my sound Lord they will continue to develop and cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving we thank you for this year we thank you for this service we thank you for the preaching of your word we thank you for the opportunity to give we thank you Lord because we came I pray that thanksgiving will become our nature gratitude will be our default set mode in the name of Jesus Lord I pray for the sinner they will come to you they will come into a place of repentance Lord they will give their lives to you I pray for this brother I pray for this sister they are saying yes Lord here I am for you may they be received in your kingdom may your kingdom come in their lives as they seek to connect with you Father we thank and we bless you for it is in Jesus name we have believed and prayed everybody say we can do better than that for you Next Sunday, I'll begin to dive into steps towards Thanksgiving. So, please keep coming. And those who are tuning in, keep tuned in every Sunday. We want to be a blessing to you from wherever you are. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. Amen. May he give you peace. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. All our guests.